Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do another fun painting. So let's get started. We'll start off today with our two inch brush in a nice soft light blue color. And I'm just going to drop this right, on, right along the top here of this painting. This is going to be our sky today. And today I think we're going to go ahead and make a bit of a stormy sky. A lot of clouds in it. Add a little black and a little more blue to that color. And get a really nice dark top to the sky. And then allow it to become a little lighter as it fades down. Not a whole lot of sky today. There. Next, with a little bit of white and blue, but mostly white on the filbert brush, I'm going to go ahead and just begin working on some, some little stormy clouds. Maybe most our sky today will be covered by these clouds and only a little bit of this background will show through. There. I do want a lot of clouds. And some are going to pick up a lot of the background and some won't. It just depends on how much paint you have on the brush. And I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to go with it. And if I want one area a little brighter, then I'll add a little more paint to that area later. There we go. Be loose and free when you do these clouds. That's the, that's the best way to do it. Have the most fun that way. Now, as you can see, I have a basic sketch on the canvas and also I begin to underpaint some of the mountains here. This is going to be a lake and this is all a reflection down here. So now we can go ahead and drop on some, some highlight to this mountain. Maybe we have a little ridge right there. There. It's not going to take a whole lot of highlight today because this mountain is pretty far away. It's soft. There we go. And I'm using the filbert brush. You could use the three quarter brush or a palette knife or whatever. I like the filbert because it's going to give me some pretty soft edges. There. And this mountain's pretty far away. Nice. I want a lot of sunlight in this area. We're going to have like a, a big glacier down here, so we'll leave room for that. Nice. And blend it in with the background. Now with some white on the filbert brush and maybe just a touch of yellow. Uh, right about here, I'm going to lay in some snow. Now this snow is, is pretty much being lit by the sun in this area and it will fade into shadow as we go up into the mountain a bit. So I'll be very careful to do this slowly. Don't want to overdo. Definitely be some right here. Don't put too much paint on this canvas. Paint, putting a lot of paint down is going to be one of the worst things you could do because it makes, makes highlighting it or adding more to it or having to shade certain areas of it. It makes all that very difficult. Limit the amount of paint on the canvas and you will have a better result automatically, really. It's one of the, the biggest things you can do. There. Next with a nice soft green color and our filbert brush. Let's go ahead and, and think about some mountains back here. Now today I've decided to, I guess these aren't really mountains compared to those, They're more like a little foothill covered in trees. Well, anyways, today I decided that I'm going to kind of work on the mid tones first, and then I will go back and throw some darker tones over this. And then of course our highlight. The reason I want to do that is because I'm not exactly sure where I want the light hitting this area. In order to make this a dramatic painting, because there's not a whole lot in it as far as layers go, we need to concentrate on where the light is hitting and where it's not hitting. Because if it just illuminates this whole little foothill, it's not going to be that great. So we're going to take a little extra time and, and I think it's going to be easy by putting the midtones in first. That'll make it easier. Now with a slightly darker green on our filbert brush, I'm just going to Go ahead and worry about our little, our little shadow areas. Now, in my mind, of course, as you can tell by the mountain, the light's coming across like this. So, I've got to figure that maybe the mountain range comes around, or who knows? All sorts of different things. Maybe there's a cloud. Well, there's obviously a lot of clouds in the sky today. And maybe the clouds are sort of covering the sun. Anyway, whatever it is, there's a bit of a, a shadow across this mountain right here. 
just right in that area. Doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be exact. There. Soften the edge because certain trees would catch the light. It's not going to be perfectly straight line. And I'm going to blend that down a bit. There. And when we highlight it, of course, it'll make a little more sense. And then I'm going to I add a little blue to that color. Blue is nice. I want to shade a little less paint. There we go. I'm going to shade this side of the mountain. Nice. Don't shade at all, just a bit. Because the sun's kind of up. So you, this is not totally steep, so you could see some color on the back side of the mountain. Anyway, there we go, something like that. Next, with our filbert brush, I'm going to just simply drop on some beautiful highlight areas to this larger rolling foothill. And I'm creating the suggestion of little trees by leaving a dark area in and around the trees. So I don't want to do it to every tree, but certainly to a lot of them. I want to have dark areas separating them and darks underneath them and all that. Because of course that's what gives us the life and the contrast in the painting. Don't get them too tall or it'll look like grass. <laughs> I remember I used to do that all the time. That was one thing it just it took me forever to to learn was don't get these things too tall. There. Now with our one inch brush, I'm just gonna paint in this bottom area down here. Now my sketch has changed from the top here just a bit in that, you know, when I painted the top, I didn't exactly follow my line. So now my sketch doesn't line up perfectly. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just paint over my sketch a bit and I can kind of line it back up again because it needs to be pretty accurate. Having said that though, we are gonna have a lot of blurry edges so it didn't have to be perfect. Anyways, this color is actually matching that mountain base coat because if you see, we're not even going to be able to show the sky in this reflection because of, of where that mountain is. It's covering the sky in the, in the water area. Now we'll just begin to, to drop in the rest of this little reflection area there. I think we're going to, I think we're going to go ahead and highlight this as we go very quickly. We'll just see you have a big area there of light. So I'll just take my one inch and I'll just go, whoop, there's a little bit of light. That's kind of how we'll do this. Nice. Pretty blurry. I don't want too much crisp detail in the water itself. I want the suggestion of color and shape. That's what's important. With our fan brush, I'm going to just extremely carefully drop on some lines here. Now my fan brush is old and it's very much split and I like it for effects like grass and even water lines like this. But this is just a way to get a million water lines in just a few minutes. So if you don't have more than one brush, I suggest you do that because you sort of save one as it gets older and use it for different effects like this. Better than a rake brush because this is natural and it has variations. There's no symmetrical pattern at all on this brush. Anyways, I'm being very careful here because I don't want to pick this green up and go into the middle here. So I did a little experimenting over here where there was nothing to mess up really. After I figured out the exact amount of paint I needed, then I just sort of loaded up and, and away we go. Don't stroke over it that many times in an area where there's a lot of green. Okay, now I'm going to load it up with a little fresh white a little bit of blue and let's try to, to get a couple of water lines over this <laughs> over this mountain. Don't need a ton, just a few. In fact, maybe they should get slightly larger as they come forward. We can do that. Just slightly larger. There we go. Now the last thing we want to do here is drop in a bit of a shoreline right here. Now that we're done with the hard part, which is this area, I'm okay to just drop in a little bit of a dark to simply simply break apart our two our two land areas, the reflection and the actual land. This sort of helps to show which one is which and where the water starts. There. 
It didn't take too much. <laughs> Wasn't that a lot of fun? That was certainly interesting. It, it actually worked out pretty well. We didn't have any muddy areas, so that's always good. If you got a muddy area, it's okay to wipe it with a paper towel and then put a little more paint over that area. That would probably save you. Never, never worry about using a paper towel. You always want to do that as much as you can. It really does help. There, maybe give this a bit of a, a gentle rub to reflect it into the water, but I don't want to cover up too many of my little white lines, so just a few. There. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out my website, my DVDs, and also my brush line. And thanks for watching.